I hope now I'm audible to you. Yeah, good morning students. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Take out your geology books. Notebook, geology notebook, NCRT books. Take out your stationery. And let's begin. And uh, so we were about to complete the chapter. I think we have almost completed the chapter. Can you please remind me the last thing that we have done? I think I have made that chart of comparison of all the remaining classes. Did I make the chart? I made that chart, no? Okay, very good. Diagram of AV is complete. Diagram of AV. Is okay, I, I explained you about the breathing of AV, you know, how... Uh, the respiration in double inspiration and double expiration to complete one cycle of breathing in AVs. And there are non-respiratory air sacs. What I said, non-respiratory air sacs. Okay. And uh, non-respiratory means in that those air sacs, there is no exchange of gases possible. But they do help those air sacs, they help in breathing. And how do they help in breathing? Because the lungs in AVs are non-expensile. Uh, non-expensile means like in the mammalian lungs, they can expand with the chest and they can... That is not possible in them. So the pressure difference is only created by those non-respiratory air sacs. Okay. So what do they do? They just create the pressure difference. <clears throat> but because of them, what is possible that in the lungs, there is a unidirectional flow of air. The flow of air is unidirectional. That means complete air can be exhaled and a new bunch of air will come inside. And therefore, there is no residual volume. There is no residual volume and therefore, because residual volume is all waste air, it is used air, consumed air, and therefore fresh and fresh air is coming. And that is required also in AVs because they have to keep on flying for long distances for a long time. And uh, that is, you can imagine that how important for them. And moreover, as we ascend up, as we ascend up the partial pressure of oxygen, it decreases. And we know that the Oxygenation of hemoglobin depends on the partial pressure of oxygen. If the PO2 is lesser, oxygenation will be lesser. I think I made this point very clear to you. And I think everyone sitting there, have you understood? If not, I will make some more uh, you know, efforts to explain that. And that is the reason why. See, because when the air is inhaled by the AVs, uh, there are so many air sacs. Air is also going there. In our lungs, what is happening when we inhale, air is only going to the lungs and, you know, only the, the respiratory passage. But imagine the situation in the birds. In the birds, what is happening in the entire, you know, uh, their entire uh, body, the air sacs are distributed. And that is the reason if there is any respiratory infection in birds, Pani Pani Baba. If there is any respiratory infection in bird, it is difficult for them to survive because it is not the respiratory involvement, it is the involvement of the entire body. You might have heard about the bird flu. Do you remember which virus has caused the bird flu? Narendra. <clears throat> yeah, which virus? H5N1. Very good. It is H5N1. H5N1 is the bird flu virus. It is a variant of coronavirus only, beta. And what, uh, you know, uh, the and there is no coming back if a bird is infected. The bird has to be culled. You know, culled, 
Culling means killing. It is called culling, C-U-L-L-I-N-G. And it means killing the birds. Thousands and thousands of birds are put in a big pit and they are not covered, just they are burnt. They are burnt like hell. But you know, you know that there are health concerns for the human beings also. And I think I made you explain that. My dear children, I uh, did I open the, uh, you know, the, uh, the examples? Did we do the examples of the different classes? Examples also done. All the examples, mammals and all examples, I painting. Complete chapter is completed. Oh, examples of mammals, all. Mammals also, I painting. Mammals are gonna. And mammals, not done Gaia 3. Gaia 3, what about the uh, birds? Example of birds, Columba, Titacula, Pavo. Mm. Birds done and mammals not done. Okay, so just one more minute, we will see the examples of the mammals. They are the most easy for us to remember. They are the most easy for us to relate to them. Okay. So whatever examples in mammals are given in the textbook, they are the only one that is our target now. Dear children, what is the name of King Cobra? Come on, King Cobra. King Cobra, beta. King Cobra. Naja Hanna. Very good. It is Naja or Naga. Naga Hanna. H-A-N-N-A Hanna. Naga Hanna is the king cobra and uh, Naja Naja or Naga Naga is an Indian cobra. And they are the poisonous snakes. Python, Python the name is Python, but Python is a non-poisonous snake. What about the sea vipers or the sea snakes? Are they poisonous or non-poisonous sea ocean snakes? They are poisonous, very good, they are poisonous beta. And now let me just take these examples. Oviparous, <coughs> the egg-laying mammals or oviparous mammals. But uh, just remember, just learn one term here. They are also known as monotremes. But uh, just remember, monotremes, monotremes. Okay, so a word for oviparous mammals, we can call them monotremes. Actually, mammals can be divided into three categories. And uh, these are the, <coughs> the first one. The first, uh, you know, evolved mammals are the monotremes only. After monotremes, after monotremes came the marsupials, marsupials, and after the marsupials came the placentals, the placentals. After the marsupials came the placentals. Okay, so these uh, monotremes. But a monotremes can also be known as the uh, prototherians, 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 and uh, marsupials also called the metatherians, metatherians, and uh, the placentals are also called the eutherians, the eutherians. So these are the commonly known uh, groups, and these are the Latinized. Uh, you know, taxonomical group. So these are the taxonomical group, taxonomic, uh, you know, taxon. Monotremes are prototherians, then metatherians and eutherians. Prototherians, metatherians, eutherians. So these are the prototherians, oviparous. They are the egg-laying mammals like ornithorhynchus. Ornithorhynchus. It is platypus. Duck build platypus. It is duck build platypus. Duck, duck, it looks like a bird. From distance, it looks like a bird. And therefore, the name also have a bird name. Ornitho, ornitho, ornitho means birds. Ornithology, scientific study of birds. Ornitho rinkus. Duck build platypus. What I'm saying? I'm saying duck, duck build, duck build platypus. 
viviparous mammals these are the mammals which give birth these are the macropus macropus is kangaroo macropus is kangaroo and this is a metatherian or marsupials beta marsupials are the mammals which are having a pouch they can also be called the pouched mammals they can also be called the pouched mammals okay let me tell you i wanted to give that common name also to you so beta note down that the monotremes are the oviparous mammals or egg laying mammals okay egg laying mammals egg laying mammals and uh, the marsupials are also known as the pouched they are also called the pouched mammals and these placentals are placentals they are the normal placental the most evolved of them are placentals okay <clears throat> very good pouched mammals then teropus 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 is flying fox teropus is flying fox camelus so easy to remember camelus is camel camelus is camel macaca 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 mulatta macaca mulatta is the rhesus monkey macaca monkey macaca mulatta mulatta macaca mulatta is rhesus monkey <clears throat> equus 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 horse equus equus horse delphinus name itself as dolphin delphinus delphinus dolphin delphinus dolphin balenoptera baleen baleen blue blue baleen baleen blue blue balenoptera balenoptera blue whale balenoptera blue whale then panthera tigris panthera tigris or tigris tiger panthera tigris tiger panthera leo lion panthera leo lion very simple simple names are there then there are two more names for example the uh, rat rattus rattus rat means rattus rattus rat rattus rattus mouse moose domestica moose m u s moose you know the sanskrit word for mouse is moose or moosh i think moose only the sanskrit word for mouse is moose only i think this name is taken from sanskrit because we cannot say sanskrit is taken from this name because sanskrit is the oldest language the sanskrit mouse is moose m moose and therefore mouse is uh, scientifically called moose domestica moose domestica okay canis canis dog canis dog feel is cat feel is cat feel the cat feel the cat feel is cat these two uh, people, people can reverse them so canis dog canis dog carnesial teeth carnesial teeth you know they have got scissor like teeth carnesial teeth canis dog feel is feel the cat feel is balino balino blue blue balino blue whale teropus 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 is a flying fox bat teropus flying fox bat i remember the name of bat i think it is gabadam gabada what is the sanskrit word for bat i had a very uh, scary uh, gabalam gabalam okay gabalam 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 okay gabalam gabalam <clears throat> yeah so when i had that corona uh, you know uh, fever and i was alone at home and with like one of my assistants so we both and he also did not go home and we both were living in the house alone okay in the night time when i got up okay so what happens that i find this uh, something is flying in my house tug tug and flying very fast and coming to the mouth and then not hitting me so to some time i believe it is just like i'm asleep or something then i realized no it is a and i am ornithophobic by birth ornithophobic 
You can imagine the situation what happened. And you know, you cannot, if, if there is a bird in the house, you can fly it away. You can make the sound. Uh, that is something, if you just uh, try to, uh, because it cannot see. So it is only a sound which it can feel. And if you try to push him or just try to run after him, it can just go and can just attach somewhere. And it cannot be seen. So camouflage, two, three days, it remained in my house. I then wasted 5,000 rupees. I called someone and just paid him money, said, Beta, now what to do? This is like you. And thankfully, he did not get, he, he was some sweeper. And finally, I only noticed that bat in my house stick to the curtain the same color curtain and then eventually that bat was taken out but that two days were scary and uh, bat in the house is something which is also very uh, you know not auspicious anyways teropus teropus okay teropus is bat gabilam bat flying fox also called flying fox okay then can you please tell me <clears throat> what is uh, What is the scientific name of uh, penguin? Scientific name of penguin. Scientific name of penguin. Aptinoditis. Aptinoditis. Very good. It is Aptinoditis is penguin. This is Teropus. Teropus or Pateropus. Teropus is bat, okay? Then Mekaka, Mekaka, monkey, Mekaka, monkey. Hmm? After that, uh, there is one more interesting name here. And beta, this is uh, <coughs> Delphinus is dolphin, Delphinus, Eliphas, Eliphas is elephant, Eliphas is elephant. And Macropus, Macropus, kangaroo, Macropus, kangaroo, Pateropus, Flying fox, Camillus, Camille, then Macaca, <clears throat> monkey, Rectus is rat, Canis is dog, Felis is cat, Eliphas is elephant, Equus is horse, Delphinus is common dolphin, and Balinoptera is blue whale, Panthera tigris is tiger, and Panthera li leo is lion. And with this, we come to the end of this. Uh, uh, these names now. And uh, this chapter is also over. And you have to you can just see these. It's an interesting one. And you can try to add some more points if you want. You can make some more uh, columns here. Try to make it in your notebook. The more you make it, the more stronger your knowledge becomes. Knowledge means your more stronger your uh, confidence becomes in answering. And uh, yes, <clears throat> this is the only way of uh, putting something in the long-term memory. Match the following. Let us try this question. Operculum, parapodia, scales, complates, radula, hairs, coanocytes, and gristlets. Similar type of questions. Pakka, pakka going to be tasked in the examination. Operculum, operculum. So operculum is going with osteoxys. Osteoxys. Then um, <coughs> parapodia. Parapodia is nearest. Parapodia is in nearest and uh, nearest is annelida so we can say annelida now scales <coughs> scales are matching with uh, cyclostomata and chond eh? cyclostomata and chondriacties scales now we can <coughs> match scales with the reptiles then uh, comb plates <coughs> comb plates with uh, tinophora radula 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 is matching with Mollusca, hairs, <clears throat> yes, hairs are mammalian character, hairs are mammalian character. Then coenocytes, now coenocytes are present in the porifera and uh, gill slits are present in cyclostomata and chondriac teeth. But uh, why I did not match these scales with uh, sixth one, because in the sixth there is cyclostomata and in cyclostomata, there are no scales. Yes, chondric teeth, they have scales, 
and their scales are the placoid scales, placoid scales. Okay, I think this is a good question. Then segmentation in the body is first observed in which of the following? Segmentation in the body is first observed in which of the following? This question is a easy cake for all of you. You can answer A, B, C, D. In this question, A, B, C, D. Yes, please, A, B, C, D. Please, question number 14. Let me check. <clears throat> it is very, very easy. Segmentation in the body is first observed in which of the following? And answer is, yeah, come on, what happened? What happened, beta? Yes, Priyanka, your answer is correct. Gayatri, your answer is correct. Yes, Gayatri, answer is correct. Good. You can even answer A, B, C, D. And yes, Bhanu, and now so many answers are. I can see, yes, it is an elida. And uh, in this uh, phylum, there is one more very important thing that comes in the animal kingdom. Can you please tell me what is that? What that appears for the first time in Anelida? Yes, please. Very good. What is that first thing where that comes in Anelida? <clears throat> Anelida, they have got a closed circulatory system. One more thing. One more thing. Very good. Circulatory system, a closed circulatory system. And one more thing. One more thing. Yes, metameric segmentation, closed circulatory system. And do you know something? Something, yes, true segmentation. True silom, Ajita, you're right. True silom, silomates, you silomates, for the very first time in the animal kingdom, a true silom is found. And a true silom is found in Anelida. True silom is found in Anelida. And uh, well, we will more and more if come to my mind. I'll do the practice also. I'll make you practice also. And with this, we come to the end of this chapter. This is the first chapter in uh, bio, in geology. And now let us move to the next chapter. And the next chapter name is structural organization in animals. Structural organization in animals. Dear children, this chapter has two parts. Okay, The first part of this chapter, and today you will be given the assignments. Today you will be sent the assignments. If not, then just remind me once. Okay, when I go home, just any one of you can remind me. Maybe in the group, I will quickly send the assignments to all of you. Because the e-copy is already available. Only the, the offline children, they have to wait till evening. By the time the printouts will be available. But offline, the online student, we can quickly give the e-copy to them. So this chapter has two parts. Structural organization in animals. in animals and uh, you will be given assignment number one and assignment number two assignment number one comprised of the animal tissues okay so in assignment number one you will have animal tissues and assignment number two are the animals now <clears throat> we we have been doing the other animals like frog and uh, earthworm also but uh, this year, I am not doing the frog and earthworm. I am only doing the cockroach. Cockroach. If common questions are there on frog and earthworm, that we will, be, like for example, what do you know because it is a member of Anelida and frog, it is a M amphibia. Those questions we will be giving you. But otherwise, a very detailed question, which are there in the chapter that I am not going to do. And let us see if... Uh, I will talk to the other geology teachers of the other coaching centers. And uh, like I came to know that this year, uh, no one have uh, no one have done that. OK, so right now I'm just dividing the chapter into two parts, animal tissues and cockroach. Assignment number two has got cockroach, earthworm, frog questions also. In those, you have to only do the cockroach questions. Starting with the first part, animal tissues. From the which phylum we can see the tissues appearing for the first time? There is an issue with the... Video.
Okay, so there was a little struck in the video. Okay, now let's begin now. My question was to you. So just once again, I can just quickly summarize what I am doing. Structural organization in animals, this chapter, the second chapter, we will be doing in zoology. This chapter is divided into two parts, animal tissues and other animals like cockroach, earthworm and frog. We will be focusing on cockroach only and here animal tissues. My question is to you, which phylum is the first time we have seen the tissues? Which phylum for the very first time we can see the animal tissues? No problem. What even? Okay. Yeah. Phylum Nidaria and Tinophora, these two phylum, I mean, Nidaria, uh, you know, in them, we have seen them for the very first time. Phylum Nidaria and Phylum Nidaria and Phylum Tinophora, they have only tissue grade of organization. But as such, the first one we can say phylum nidaria is the first one or sealantrata, okay, or sealantrata. Sealantrata, we have seen the first time. Okay. Now, what is an animal tissue official definition? Official definition of animal tissue means it's a group of cells, group of cells uh, along with the intercellular substances along with the intercellular substances complete okay along with the intercellular substances that have a common embryonic origin they have a common embryonic origin and therefore they have a same function now what are the same function really refers to but right now official definition says is this only i will explain you what the same function and what are some places where we cannot apply same functions okay so my dear children group of cells along with the intercellular substances that have a common embryonic origin common embryonic embryonic origin origin and they perform the same function and they perform the same function same function this is a tissue this is called a tissue i hope you understand very good now animals they have got four basic type of tissues all the entire body is made up of four basic type of tissues and we all know that these tissues these are epithelium or epithelial tissue epithelial tissue then we have the connective tissue which also help in providing the support yes it provides connections between the other tissues apart from that it provides the support and help in transfer transfer of the substances the transportation of the substances so connective tissue is the second one then we have got the muscular tissue muscular tissue okay the contractile tissue muscular tissue and we have the nervous tissue the nervous tissue okay so they all have a common embryonic origin so let us see which embryonic germ layer they originate when i say that they have a common embryonic origin i don't really means that they have got a common uh, you know common um, germ layer no i am saying in that germ layer also suppose if this is ectoderm in ectoderm also when I say a tissue has a common embryonic origin, that a small part of ectoderm is now divided and form this complete tissue. This is the meaning of having common embryonic origin. And uh, so because you will find that entire body is made up of the three layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Okay. So it, because all the body parts are from that only. So this is ectoderm and this is endoderm and this one is mesoderm so in some part okay from this one tissue has originated from here some other tissue has originated like that okay so epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue and nervous tissue 
we can say that all the nervous tissue in the body it come from the ectoderm all the nervous tissue some 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 tissue is from this part some nervous tissue is from this part some nervous tissue is from this part like that so the entire body nervous tissue is originating from the ectoderm coming to the muscular tissue m for muscular and m for mesoderm so it is a mesoderm which give rise to the tissue having the maximum weight more than 50% or approximately 50% of the body weight is of muscular tissue so in terms of the weight it has got a lot of extensive uh, presence in the body then we have the connective tissue and connective tissue also has the uh, you know the mesoderm the <clears throat> it origin from the mesoderm so connective and muscular they have common uh, place in uh, in terms of the common germ layer hmm? but that does not mean that the same place connective also no in the entire mesoderm in some a uh, one connective tissue originate in some other connective tissue originate from somewhere another connective tissue originate epithelial tissue now let us start with the epithelial tissue epithelial as the name indicate it is lying upon other tissues epi epi means upon thelios means grow epi means upon thelios means grow it grows on other tissues so it is found <coughs> as a covering of a tissue of an organ and also if a organ is hollow in the inside spaces it lines so wherever any surface is there whether it is outside or inside you will find the epithelium okay so the outermost tissue in every part let us say we have this is our body okay this is our body i am just doodle this is the body so you will find that complete body is actually uh, covered by epithelial tissue there is a epithelial tissue in the skin also called epidermis then inside the body also you will find if there is a cavity it is lining the cavity it is also on this side and also on this side that side okay so whenever there is a cavity it lines the body cavity if there is an organ inside if there is an organ inside let me take the organ out and then explain you if there is an organ inside so where is the epithelial tissue here so epithelial tissue can be found in this place and epithelial tissue can be found in the other side also so what i am saying that there is a no point in the body where you will not find that and you are seeing and don't find any epithelial tissue no surface is left uncovered no surface in the body is left uncovered not even a single dot in the body which is uncovered it is just covering every part okay so when it is lying outside we can say it is covering and when it is lining the inner surface we can say it is lining so the two words that we are using most often here is covering and lining so outer side is called covering covering the outer surface and this is the inner surface this is called lining covering is outer and lining is inner lining 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 is inner and covering is outer now these are the simple terms that we are using okay so that is the epithelial tissue epi means upon and thelios means grow let me go to this place common place uh, better animal tissue the study of tissues as such not only animal the study of tissues is known as histology the study of tissue is called histology the scientific study of tissue is called histology okay let me go to the next page dear children so if this is the epithelial tissue is uh, found here it originate from the germinal layer which 
forms the outer skin. Make sense? Once again, once again, once again. If epithelium is found on the skin, actually, so it originates from the, uh, the epithelium also originates from the same region. You understand? Okay. So uh, the ectoderm gave rise to skin. So beta, skin epithelium also originate from the same place. Now, if you will find that this stomach, the lining of the stomach, okay, so the stomach originate from endoderm. The stomach originate from endoderm. So the lining of the stomach, this also comes from endoderm. So this is also endoderm. <clears throat> And covering also endoderm. Endoderm. Okay. Now coming to the body cavity. I am saying coming to the body cavity. So if I give a section here and I will show the body cavity. Okay. The gut here. The outer body wall and the gut wall. And this is the peritoneum. The peritoneum. Okay. This is a true body cavity siloam and the peritoneum. So this peritoneum is actually, uh, you know, uh, lining the body cavity. Epithelium of this originates from the mesoderm because, beta, this peritoneum, this is peritoneum, this originates from the mesoderm, mesoderm, okay? So its epithelium called mesothelium also originates from the mesoderm. So we have seen that that is the only tissue in the body which can originate from ectoderm, which can originate from endoderm, and which can originate from mesoderm. May, un, understood? Okay. So, <clears throat> once again, the final take, bacha, the epithelial tissue, it originates from, okay. So, epithelial tissue, it originates from all the three, that is ectoderm, ectoderm, then mesoderm and the endoderm endoderm it originates from i am talking about the the germ layers okay now coming to the ne next tissue in the body which is connective and i want you to please say to me so that i can write here and then the muscular muscular you can say to me and then i can write or you can write and the so fourth one is called nervous. Okay, you can say to me, I will write here. Okay, so I, yes, better, very good. So mesoderm and uh, me, okay, mesoderm, mes mesoderm, ectoderm, very good, very good, better. The correct answer, you are absolutely right. This is mesoderm and this is mesoderm and this is ectoderm, very good. Meso, meso, ecto. And uh, epithelial tissue from ecto, meso, endo, all three, all three germ layer. And this is an important uh, question uh, that can be framed. Now, let us continue further in epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue has some characteristics. Epithelial tissue has some characteristics. And the characteristics are, for example, the cells are tightly packed beta cells because they are covering they are providing the protection so cells are tightly packed point number one the cells are tightly packed tightly packed means that the intercellular spaces they are almost negligible there is no intercellular substances there is no intercellular substances, okay? Almost negligible. The intercellular substances almost negligible. Almost negligible. Okay, understood, understood. Number one, number two, okay? Cells are tightly packed. Okay, and uh, intercellular substances are uh, almost negligible. Actually, both the points are actually explaining the same thing only. And uh, number three, hmm? 
all these cells are lying on a basement membrane so the epithelial tissue it is lying on a basement membrane basement membrane normally when the membrane word is used hmm, so some epithelial tissue or some uh, cellular thing is coming to the mind normally when we say the body membrane membrane like mucous membrane or serous membrane in the body or synovial membrane in the body what comes to the mind is that there is an epithelial tissue and underlying connective tissue that complete package is called a membrane hmm? generally but bachcha this basement membrane is not like that beta this is not made up of any cell it is made up of proteins and mucopolysaccharide mucopolysaccharide means they are modified polysaccharides they they provide the gum like sticky material it is made up of protein fibers it is non cellular basement membrane is non cellular it is non cellular or acellular it is acellular non cellular or acellular membrane okay so that is a basement membrane i can show this for example but just this is a basement membrane that i have drawn here this is the basement membrane and basement membrane separates it from the underlying connective tissue underlying connective tissue and this is a epithelial tissue underlying connective tissue and this is the basement membrane this is the basement membrane okay <clears throat> this one it is made up of protein fibers and mucopolysaccharide no cells are found in the basement membrane so that is one point point number 4 which cannot be ignored a very important point here is that there is no blood supply this is the only tissue which is avascular beta the only tissue which is a vascular it is a vascular that means it has no personal blood supply hmm? it has no blood supply no personal blood supply or direct blood supply there is no blood vessel coming inside the epithelial tissue because the cells are tightly packed the neurons they are unable to penetrate between them okay so neurons <clears throat> neurons or nerves neurons or nerves they are unable they are unable to penetrate to penetrate penetrate means going inside penetrate the tightly packed tightly packed cells tightly packed cells tightly packed cells here i can say the blood vessels blood vessels and neurons both blood vessels and neurons nerves blood vessels and neurons are unable to penetrate the tight, tightly packed cells of epithelial tissue blood vessels and neurons are unable to penetrate the tightly packed cells of of epithelial tissue but i hope you understand this this is completely understood so these are some important points about the uh, characteristics of epithelial tissue this tissue can be single layered we can call it as <clears throat> five point it can be single layered
okay which is also known as aka also known as simple simple epithelium simple epithelium or it can be multi layered it can be multi layered also known as ak means also known as compound compound epithelium or also called stratified beta there is a word here and i am putting this word elsewhere there is a word here and i am putting this is coming here hmm? the word is stratified stratified also called stratified epithelium beta strata or stratum stratum means layer its plural become strata 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 means layers plural strata plural stratified stratified this means multi layered having many layers stratum means layer strata means layers layer layers stratified it is made up of many layers now what is the point here one thing is that sir simple and compound another thing is that the functions of the two they are basically different the simple epithelium is having a function of secretion or diffusion or exchange of gases okay so i hope this is clear i'll just go to the next page again i will come back here but right now i go to the next page so the function of the two are drastically different okay so simple epithelium simple epithelium which is a single layered epithelium its functions are for example its functions are diffusion diffusion its function are diffusion its function are exchange of substances exchange of substances substances okay or gases exchange of substances or gases number 3 is filtration okay filtration number 4 is absorption 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 and number 5 is secretion secretion okay number 5 is secretion diffusion exchange of substances or exchange of gases filtration absorption secretion if any of these terms that you see and you have to match with the epithelium that is a single layered epithelium that is a single layered epithelium or simple epithelium okay now let us come to the compound epithelium compound epithelium which is also known as aka which eyed which eyed stratified it is strati stratified stratified epithelium let me write down the functions okay so its main function is protection its main function is protection protection from whom protection from stress there can be a mechanical a mechanical stress mechanical stress or there can be a chemical attack or chemical stress the word is stress official word stress mechanical stress and chemical stress from these two there is a protection protection of the body tissue protection of the underlying connective tissue that is i hope you understand okay so the functions of both of them are completely different another point can come to your mind is that sir if there is no blood supply then how do we i mean how do the tissue survive okay if there is no blood supply then how does the tissue survive very very uh, you know genuine question if you are thinking like that okay so this is a tissue and uh, it is lying on a non cellular 
it is lying on a non cellular basement membrane so this is the bm or basement membrane and there is an underlying connective tissue and there is an underlying connective tissue so bachcha this is a underlying connective tissue okay i'll just write uct underlying connective tissue and underlying connective tissue has plenty of blood vessels so underlying connective tissue has plenty of blood vessels blood capillaries can be seen lot of capillary network can be seen there lot of capillary network can be seen there my dear children i am just showing you a simple diagram to show the blood capillaries and from here the substances which are uh, you know absorbed the substances which are absorbed from here and these substances oxygen and nutrients they can be utilized by the cells of epithelial tissue so all oxygen or maybe the nutrients oxygen and nutrients can go from the underlying connective tissue because underlying connective tissue has plenty of blood capillaries what you see here are blood capillaries blood capillaries this is one thing another doubt that come to your mind sir for example we have sensation okay our hand can sense the thing we have sensation lot of sensation on the skin now you said sir skin is covered by an epithelium and you call it epidermis so we learned that epidermis epidermis is the epithelium of a skin sir fine but how we sense when there is no nerve that can penetrate inside the epithelial tissue then how do we sense okay so i'll tell you for sensation it is not required that you have got the nerve ending directly coming to one place okay so once again skin now skin is a stratified epithelium skin is a classical example of stratified epithelium okay so it is a multi layered epithelium a stratified epithelium in the skin <clears throat> this epithelium is called epidermis epi means upon and dermis means the derma the skin the this is epidermis and the underlying connective tissue so this is the epithelial epithelial tissue and the underlying connective tissue is called dermis okay the underlying connective tissue is called dermis so dermis has got blood supply and dermis has also the uh, you know the nerve supply in the dermis so there are the nerves the neurons are there in the dermis okay so these are the sensory neurons these are the sensory sensory neurons present in the underlying connective tissue sensory neurons present in the underlying connective tissue which are i mean this is enough okay so this layer is not that much thick that if you make a touch here and these are not stimulated this is not that much thick maybe in the diagram it it can it may look like a big thing but actually in reality it is not that thick that the neuron lying just behind it cannot be stimulated by if we have a touch or anything pressure on the skin the underlying uh, you know epithelium cannot sense that it can sense it can sense okay understood <clears throat> okay so yes the uh, blood supply is also from the uct and the nerve is also in the uct the sensory neurons and the sensory nerves let me just quickly uh, revise all this that we have done today and uh, histology is what we started in structural organization in animals animal tissue and cockroach are the two parts so part 1 part 2 assignment is going to be shared very soon to you the moment i reach in the lunch time i reach home and from my system i will share it to you okay so the tissue is first seen in the phylum nidaria or phylum tenophora 
the two phylum which have tissue grade of organization are Nidaria and Tenophora. Okay. So these we find the tissues for the very first time. The official definition of animal tissue is the group of cell along with the intercellular uh, material or intercellular substances. So this is what I call intercellular, intercellular substances. Intercellular substances, okay? From now onwards, I call it ICS intercellular substances so complete cells these are the cells and the intercellular substances this complete this motum is considered as a tissue so tissue is not only the cell but sub chinna chinna material between the cell that also is as a part of the tissue so that has to be included in the definition of tissue understood okay and um, so they, these cells have a common embryonic origin and have a common function. In some cases, the function may not look similar, but the common target is achieved. For example, now the functions of the blood are different. For example, the function of the blood is also part of the immunity. The function of the blood is transport that we know and transfer of gases and so many these are the functions blood is a connective tissue okay and in the blood the cells are there for example the rbc wbc as such both of them they don't have a same function wbc perform a different function rbc perform a different function but both of them are part of the blood which is a fluid connective tissue and the functions which are of the fluid connective tissue so for those common functions, all these cells are working together like a team. So in some cases, for example, in case of the vascular tissue in plants also, like in xylem and phloem, the cells may not look similar and they also don't have the same function per se. But they actually, the common target is being achieved by all of them. So all these cells, they work as a team to uh, achieve the common target or the common task. So that is what I have to add here. The same function, but not always. And they have a common embryonic origin that is forever, okay, for always. Epithelial tissue therefore originates from ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. Connective is from the mesoderm muscular from the mesoderm and nervous tissue from the uh, ectoderm. Please remember about the nervous tissue because here sometimes we get nervous and <laughs> we, we write different answer. But no doubt it is the ectoderm which is giving rise to the nervous tissue also. So the definition of a tissue, uh, epithelial tissue, which is found on all the uh, surfaces, whether inside surface or outside surface, not even a point dot on the surface where there is a direct connective tissue we can see. No, we will see an epithelial tissue over the underlying connective tissue. When we use the word lining, we are actually referring to the inside of an organ. And when we are using the word covering, that we are actually referring to the outside covering. Okay, so in this page, characteristics of uh, epithelial tissue are being uh, discussed here. The cells are tightly packed. The intercellular substances, ICS, it is very much reduced or almost negligible, almost negligible. Uh, the it, cells lie on the basement membrane, which is non-cellular or acellular, okay? So we can say if it is acellular, can we say it is non-living? Hmm? Can we say basement membrane is non-living? Bacha? What is this? I'll call him. I'll call him. Beta. Priyanka, you are saying we cannot say it is non-living. Okay. Can you support your answer? Others, my question is, when basement membrane is not made up of any cell, it is non-cellular. 
can we say the basement membrane is non living also others want to answer okay i'll call that person the technical person voice problem ha huh. disturbance voice disturbance okay voice voice is now all right beta check the voice please non living okay emirates priyanka it is non living uh, voice is all right very good very good okay so yes we can say it is non cellular we can say it is non living okay we can say it is non cellular and yes it is non living yes let me continue beta in this one so we have seen uh, yes very important point is that this tissue is avascular there is no personal blood supply and the tissue can be single layered or multi layered if it is a single layered we can call it a simple epithelial tissue and if it is multi layered we can call it a compound epithelial tissue or compound epithelium the functions are completely different the simple epithelium they have functions like diffusion across the uh, this epithelium then exchange of substances or gases filtration absorption and secretion so in any place if any of these functions are retain so obviously it is happening through the simple epithelium in that place the epithelium cannot be compound it is simple only for example diffusion when i say diffusion of gases in the uh, alveoli the diffusion of gases that means it is always the simple epithelium across which it is happening okay exchange of substances or gases that can also be possible only in the uh, simple epithelium filtration now filtration is happening in the bowman's capsule in the bowman's capsule the filtration of the blood is happening okay so this ultra filtration is also possible through the simple epithelium you know that the cells are simple squamous and the cells are called podocytes podocytes so this is a bowman's capsule the bowman's the bowman's capsule and here also the simple epithelium across which the filtration of the blood occurs and this is the alveolus here also the simple epithelium okay beta absorption in the small intestine or we can say in the gut in the gut wherever absorption is occurring so yes gut lining is simple epithelium gut lining must be simple epithelium and secretion any place where the secretion is happening for example let us say we have got the epithelium of the stomach which is modified which is modified uh, into a gland okay so yes there are many glands in the entire uh, lining of the gut where the glands are there glands are derived from the mucosa or the mucous membrane so that represents the simple epithelium i what i am trying to say is this what i am trying to say is uh, for example in the stomach there are gastric glands na gastric glands are there in the stomach okay we say that gastric glands are derived from the mucosa okay so mucosa means there is a mucous membrane here a mucous membrane here and mucous membrane means when we say mucous membrane the body membranes comprise of two thing of course there is an epithelium and the underlying connective tissue but the gastric gland so if i have to show you the how the gastric glands have come 
let me show you gastric glands okay so these glands are tubular they are simple tubular or simple branched tubular simple branched tubular like this simple tubular or simple branch tubular so beta now if i have to think of what is this cell okay so this is just the same epithelium epithelium of the mucous membrane is just modified epithelium of the mucous membrane this is the epithelium 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 of mucous membrane of mucous membrane mucous membrane and this is modified the same epithelium epithelium is modified is modified into a gland into a gland <laughs> epithelium is modified into a gland so better remember that all glands are epithelial in origin all glands are epithelial in origin make it a thumb rule a thumb rule is that <clears throat> but a thumb rule make it a thumb rule and the thumb rule says that all glands are epithelial in origin all glands are all glands are epithelial are epithelial epithelial in origin they are epithelial in origin all glands in the body are epithelial in origin okay i hope you understand what i am saying uh, secretion so secretion is actually occurring in the epithelium and that is a simple epithelium it cannot be a compound epithelium compound epithelium is found like in skin compound epithelium is found in the uh, in the in, in the rectum okay uh, in the in the conjunctiva of eye in the in the, in the vagina okay so these are the places where you find a compound epithelium a compound a multilayered epithelium or stratified epithelium stratified epithelium so in this slide we have explained you how the exchange of substances is occurring and also when the uh, epithelial tissue is avascular then how come it is living how come it is surviving so all the nutrients and gases are actually diffusing across the basement membrane the non living basement membrane and these are very quickly diffusing into so it is a underlying connective tissue which is actually rearing or taking care of all these works of the epithelial tissue in the same way the underlying connective tissue the neurons the sensory neurons they are there and uh, across the epithelial tissue in the skin as we have shown here and this is enough this is not that much thick that when something is touched the here and these neurons are not stimulated yes they can be stimulated and we can get the sensation we can get the sensation uh this slide yes all gland a very important uh, note you can make and uh, this is i am explaining the differences of functions of the two uh, type of epithelium now further the epithelial tissue is uh, uh, is classified on the basis of the shape of the cell okay so further the epithelium can be classified on the basis of the shape of the cell so beta i am now putting here this is the epithelial epithelial tissue it can be classified into two categories as just now i have written here it is a simple epithelium simple epithelium or it is a stratified stratified epithelium simple epithelium and stratified epithelium okay simple epithelium and stratified epithelium done now <clears throat> on the basis of the shape of the cells further we can classify done so simple epithelium can be can be this is a basement membrane simple epithelium can be flat squamous cells flat squamous cells 
This is called simple squamous. Simple squamous. Okay. Simple squamous. The cells can be boxy, cube-like, like cubes. Cells can be cube-like, they are boxy, and this is called simple, simple, cuboidal, cuboidal or cubical, simple cuboidal epithelium or cubical. The cells can be tall, pillar-like or tall, column-like column like okay column like and this is known as the simple columnar simple columnar this is called simple simple columnar column like tall column like cells i can call it as simple columnar columnar epithelium simple columnar epithelium has a basal Okay, so nucleus, nucleus is towards the base, as this is a, you know, characteristic of the simple columnar. Okay, so these are the common type of cells, simple squamous, simple cuboidal, and simple columnar. In the same way, we can classify the stratified epithelium also as simple uh, stratified squamous, stratified uh, cuboidal and stratified uh, 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 columnar but generally stratified epithelium in the body extensively you will find the stratified squamous so skin as i told you skin skin is uh, stratified uh, you know uh, squamous so let me show you the skin So as we are going up and up, the cells are becoming flatter and flatter. So this is the point I want to say that even if it is a stratified epithelium, the, uh, the name of the stratified epithelium is kept on the shape of the cells of the topmost layer. For example, now here the topmost layer of cells are flat, flat, okay? So this is called stratified squamous. This can be called as stratified, stratified squamous. It is stratified squamous. And the basement membrane is actually found at the base. So all these cells, when we say all these cells are lying, that means <clears throat> this is the position. The basement membrane, the bottom layer of cell, it is lying on the basement membrane. The layer above is actually lying on that, uh, you know, that layer, the stratum germinativum. And as we are going higher and higher, we are going to become, the cells are going to become uh, flatter and flatter. So this is how the stratified squamous looks like. Okay. Uh, one more type uh, in stratified epithelium, and that is called transitional epithelium. Okay, so another type is transitional, transitional epithelium, transitional epithelium, and here also there is a basement, a very thin basement membrane. I'm not saying it is not present; it is very thin basement membrane, and yes, the bottom layer of cells are. Uh, uh, cuboidal only and as we are going higher and higher 
you'll find that the cells are becoming, uh, there is a characteristic umbrella-shaped cells. Characteristic umbrella-shaped cells can be seen, umbrella-shaped cells, okay? So we have umbrella, umbrella-shaped cells, shaped cells in the uh, stratified uh, epithelium. And this is stratified epithelium, which is called transitional epithelium. So it is a type of stratified epithelium only. And transitional epithelium, this has a special quality. And that's the only epithelium which is stretchable. It is stretchable, the only epithelium which can be stretched. It is stretchable. Very good. Okay, guys. So uh, I have shown you that how we classify the epithelium, simple epithelium on the shape of the cells, shape of the cells. Okay, the shape of the cells. If the shape of the cells are flat, this is called simple squamous, simple squamous. The basement membrane is lying here and all the cells can be found on the basement membrane and flat squamous cells and these cells are tightly packed together and when you see it on the surface so if you see it from the surface if your eyes are here if you see it from the surface then you will find the cells as they are packed like the tiles on the floor the tiles on the floor okay so you can see them as the tiles on the floor it pack like the tiles on the floor and particularly it remind us of the pavement it remind us of the pavement and you know the pavement 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 is the uh, you know side of the road where the pedestrian move on the side of the road where the pedestrian move okay that is called the pavement so you have got those highways, okay, or these are the roads on the side of the road where the, uh, you know, the people, <clears throat> the pedestrians, this is the place which is called the pavement. It reminds us of the pavement or it reminds the scientists who called it, who, uh, you know, named it as pavement and therefore this is the pavement pavement okay that is a raised raised side of the road raised the side of the road for for okay for pedestrians for pedestrians okay and this is called the pavement and this epithelium is therefore also called the pavement epithelium the pavement epithelium this epithelium can be called as the pavement epithelium Actually, the scientists of the West, of the Europe, okay, and uh, particularly in England and Europe. So there is a standard which is followed in the entire country. And the standard of the pavement is the same. So in the pavement, the tiles have to be fixed. And in the entire country, okay, the government is making the same type of shape. So those uh, European uh, scientists who are watching that and when they saw the epithelium under the microscope, that remind of the pavement there. And therefore, they named it as pavement epithelium. So the rest of the world asked, and what is this? pavement what? They say it is reminding us as the tiles on the floor. But why pavement? Because... In all these countries, the pavement has the same type of fixing. In our country, you won't find that. So in Delhi, there is a different pattern, okay? So depending upon the local uh, substances that are available, the local tiles that are available, the pavement have been, you know, developed. Now, yes, the, now the uh, cities are planned cities. For example, the first planned city of our country is the of the modern country, not, I'm not talking about the ancient India, but the modern India is uh, the Chandigarh, Chandigarh, okay? So uh, that is a planned city. And so when the plan is made, so entire city is made on the same pattern. 
you know the who planned the uh, chandigarh anyone who remember just a gk question which epithelium is god for passage of substances god good for passage of substances passage of substances yes it is a compound epithelium if it is a transfer of substances uh, exchange of substances then it is simple and if it is a passage then it is a compound for example the duct of the gland the duct of the gland and that is a compound epithelium which epithelium which epithelium is good for a uh, passage i answered that pavement epithelium present in urinary bladder yes you are right bachcha you are talking about the transitional epithelium yes it is uh, present in the bladder and other urinary pathways we'll come to that right now i am just telling you why the pavement term is used for the simple squamous okay so it is also called the cells look like the tiles on floor it's a flat cells okay and that is called simple squamous in the compound epithelium also when we say stratified squamous it is not the entire lay all the layers have the stratified uh, squamous cells only the top layer of cells if that is squamous then also we'll call it a stratified squamous make sense okay right a uh, cuboidal simple cuboidal cells are cube like simple columnar cells are tall and they are uh, pillar like with a basal nucleus nucleus is towards the base nucleus is towards the base okay so i i hope i have explained all these things and uh, uh, now these are further modified beta and particularly particularly these are further modified for example the cuboidal the modification of the cuboidal can be it is having a, a micro villi okay i'll tell you i'll tell you one by one so one modification of the <coughs> cuboidal modification simple cuboidal one modification of simple cuboidal can be that there are small blunt finger like projections of the plasma membrane blunt finger like projections of the plasma membrane and bachcha these finger like projections of the plasma membrane they are known as microvilli they are called microvilli also called brush border also called brush border brush border and uh, so this type of epithelium this type of epithelium i'll want the example where you find <coughs> okay simple simple cuboidal simple cuboidal brush border but i will make you learn this chapter and i'll go you i'll i'll don't indulge you or trap you in the uh, table and uh, no you will forget that we'll do example wise and there are some standard examples which are asked the classical examples they don't uh, trap you in the intricacy of what is that Uh, some uncommon epithelium no common common examples are there i am sure that i will make you learn these exam for example we start with this one simple cuboidal brush border Br no what is the advantage of brush border the advantage of brush border is that the uh, surface area the surface area is actually multiplied the surface area is multiplied it is multiplied it becomes too much and therefore this becomes an ideal for any exchange this becomes ideal for any exchange or diffusion okay you understand so <clears throat> coming to the example of simple cuboidal brush border either you can say brush border or you can say simple cuboidal With with microvilli, 
with with micro with micro villi micro villi with micro villi both are same and yes the example of that come on come on write the example come on i want the example what is the example of this example no 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 not a stomach not a stomach bachcha no no it is cuboidal only one example only one example and yes the example is proximal convoluted tubule do not confuse only one only one it is i'll tell you why not stomach or intestine yes i'll tell you this is only one example that have a picture in the mind simple cuboidal brush border pct that's it that's it and pct is the place where more than 99% of the reabsorption more than 99% of the reabsorption i think more than 90% sorry more than 90% of the reabsorption occurs in the pct make sense make sense okay done 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 very good now let's take the example of uh, simple squamous i told you that there is no further modification that can be found in the simple squamous okay so before coming to the simple columnar uh, where some examples are there in simple columnar i will first make you remember and revise the example of simple squamous okay so let's go to a particular slide and this is simple squamous simple squamous so where do you find only example to remember in simple squamous yes come on simple squamous what examples to remember yes this epithelium is found in come on come on where do you find this epithelium only some places some places yes cheek no beta no it is simple it is sim alveoli of lung very good you will find this in alveoli of lungs lung alveoli come on come on i'll take a shot is a shot kar dete hain ya kar dete hain lungs alveoli come on any other example yes blood capillary okay <clears throat> so lining of blood vessels and uh, blood capillaries and uh, blood capillaries because in the blood capillary there is only epithelium left a single layer left but otherwise it is the lining of blood vessels blood capillary and there is a term for it and the term for this epithelium we use it as endothelium it is called endothelium and sometimes teachers can confuse you because endo means you know you will confuse endo endo means inside okay something endoderm something endoderm you don't get confused it is not derived from endoderm blood vessel are derived from the mesoderm and endothelium is also from the mesoderm it is it is derived derived from mesoderm it is derived it is derived from mesoderm don't get confused endothelium endothelium is derived it is derived from mesoderm only mesoderm because because the blood vessels are derived from mesoderm my dear children hope you remember come on remember simple squamous lining of blood vessels there uh, it is also called endothelium if they don't write the lining of blood vessels they only write endothelium it is understood they are talking about the lining of blood vessel in the type of epithelium is simple squamous one more example can you please tell me any one more yes bowman's capsule yes one more example is the bowman's capsule in the bowman's capsule inner layer the inner layer the cells are modified the simple squamous cells okay the simple squamous cells are are modified the simple squamous cells are modified to become to become to become yes yes come on to become what to become podocytes yes you are right podocytes podocytes podo means foot site mean cell foot cell. cells with feet cells with feet podocyte cells with feet podocyte cells with uh, cell with feet and uh, simple squamous 
एलवियोलाइ ऑफ लंग्स लाइनिंग ऑफ ब्लड वेसल्स और ब्लड कैपिलरीज एंड बोमेंट्स कैप्स्यूल लाइनिंग ऑफ बोमेंट्स कैप्स्यूल वन मोर वन मोर इफ यू कैन गिव मी वन मोर वन मोर वन मोर जस्ट गिव मी वन मोर इफ पॉसिबल इफ पॉसिबल okay lining of blood cap blood uh, body cavities lining of body cavities body cavities any body cavity even the mesothelium mesothelium which is actually the lining of the body cavity the mesothelium so we have a term for it called mesothelium either they say lining of body cavity or they can call it as mesothelium there is another word for lining of body cavity they can also call it as mesothelium a k a for this this word a k a mesothelium 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 so what is mesothelium what is mesothelium it is lining of blood uh, it's lining of body cavities what is endothelium it is lining of blood vessels what is mesothelium it is lining of body cavities what is uh, endothelium sir it is lining of the blood vessels okay so what type of epithelium is mesothelium sir this is simple squamous epithelium what type of epithelium is uh, endothelium sir it is simple squamous uh, uh, epithelium okay makes sense okay so all these pleura pleura will come here only and that's uh, examples of simple squamous so beautiful examples of simple squamous okati rundu muru nalgu for examples we have learned here so just remember the number also 1 2 okay so no confusion number 3 is the this one we learned and number 4 is the mesothelium mesothelium so what is mesothelium so it is a lining of uh, the it is a name for the lining of body cavities what is the shape of mesothelium what type of epithelium it is so it is simple squamous epithelium okay done so that's about the simple squamous epithelium my dear children 1030 yaar ye class khatam ho gayi na class ka time ho gaya na july ye sunte na 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 july mein simple squamous nahi hai beta july mein simple squamous nahi hai columnar hai Okay. Don't worry. Uh, we'll uh, come to the next class and uh, learn the examples of the NCERT. In the next class, we will complete the NCERT uh, learning and reading and learning first till the syllabus, and then I will add some more points from my side as I am doing. And we will revise in the class. I will also say uh, in a tone, and you will also repeat with me in the tone. so that you can also remember if someone is there in the house and they are getting disturbed close the door and then we will speak along with me to revise it okay up to wear for exam uh, wear for exam beta is uh, i think uh, i think it is the, i have shared that in the group i think it is connective tissue only the uh, you know <coughs> i think the soft connective tissue i think that is up to there i have i have uh, you know i have uh, shared that in the group don't worry you can just see the group people have shared their number and yeah no it's over it's over aa jao it's over YouTube का बंद कर दो ये तो शेयर हो जाएगा ना ओके चिल्ड्रेन तो गॉड ब्लेस यू ऑल बाय बाय टेक केयर